Welcome. This online video lecture series is for resume expectations, originally created for PTA 140 administration to get you a resume up and running and started. However, it's also going to bridge into PTA 170, uh, your last class of the program, just to help touch base and see if there's any missing components you may need. So we're going to be talking about organization. I'm going to break it down to most of us, which is uh, the good majority of the class, then there's recent graduates, and then those who have career changes. So most of us, we're going to have a summary statement in the beginning. Um, that's optional. That's also known as the objective. Um, you're going to list your experiences, any professional organizations or community involvement. Community involvement is optional. If you don't have any community, community involvement, you take it off. Uh, professional organizations can also include APTA. Um, do you have any sections of it? Your education. So please include a COS PTA program, and I highly suggest you just write College of the Sequoias and write Physical Therapist Assistant Program. Don't abbreviate it. It looks much more classy and professional if you write the whole thing out. Uh, skills and certifications, I like that BLS, uh, Basic Life Support, and I would also put licensure. Um, licensure, you need to put pending um, if for your PTA 170, because you'll be applying soon. If you are going to type um, this for 140, you just need to, I would just not put licensure there yet since you're nowhere near pending it, uh, nowhere near applying it. I'd also kind of suggest you need to kind of stick to an overall theme. It's mostly popular to have the most current education or the most current work at the top. And then as you go down, you get older. It looks a little odd when your education is most recent, but when you list your work, that's the very first job. So either you got to stick to make it all chronological or all reverse chronological. I prefer the reverse chronological. Um, everything around the schooling should be near what you want to do, plus your work as well. For those of you who've taken the rehab aid class, you should also include that in your resume underneath certifications. For recent grads, you're going to start with education, experience, certification section, uh, basic life support, licensure. Again, for uh, PTA 170, you need to update this to pending or in progress. Now, if you're in 140, you'll leave it the way it is. Then you have any leadership roles, um, serving with um, an officer within the program is a good one. Did you assist with other activities, etc.? Were you like a group leader with one of the um, off-campus or activities that you have to perform to graduate? Any awards or activities, those are optional. If you don't have any, take them off. Those are good ones for GPA, if you made the dean's list, etc. Um, any specific skills. Okay. Um, in italics, make sure you do add BLS, all of you have to have it because of the program and go to the clinical. Most places really like it that they don't have to pay for someone to get BLS right away. And once you get hired, it's usually the responsibility of the clinic to do it. That's something I would ask. Now for career changers, you could have your objective, which again is optional. When we start looking at this more for 170, uh, the objective will be required, but it's going to be highly tailor tailored to that specific organization. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, putting any relevant experiences at the top, any additional experiences regarding that position, professional organizations or community involvement, optional. I um, highly suggest you put American Physical Therapy Association in any sections if you're a member. Um, education, following up to this point, including College Sequoia's Physical Therapy Assistant Program. Skills and certifications, um, you could move it up or down depending on where you'd like it. Um, I like to associate it near uh, education, but this is important how they put this order for career changers because they know that you're going to have a lot of experience and usually a lot of customer service, um, you know, multiple jobs, multiple jobs with long length of time. They need to kind of understand that like for you to stick yourself out from a, a recent student who doesn't have experience, you're kind of pushing your experience. But as you guys all graduate, you start working two or three years, the playing field becomes pretty much evened out. Uh, senior level candidates. Have your summary statement, experience, professional organizations, community involvement are optional, education, skills and certifications, basic life support, and, and licensure. Um, this I want you to start thinking about um, when you're five, six, seven, eight, ten years out, and I know that's crazy, but imagine looking at your resume five or six years from now, you've been in the field for quite a bit of time. And now you're really looking at like a supervision or managerial role of a clinic. Uh, say you're working in an area where they're going to promote you to level two, level three therapist. This is kind of what you're kind of organizing. Like 
it's downplayed your education because for you to be a higher managerial area, they know you have to be in the PTA program. They know you've had to graduate. And they have to make sure that you've been practicing for multiple years, that you've taken multiple students, that you've groomed others, and now you have the ability to groom others. So I just left this here just for you guys to consider it. And if you guys ever need to come back to it in a couple years, some of you may have to look at this within two or three years as you guys start moving up the ranks. So types of suggestions, um, these are kind of gathered from the internet, but they're also mine as well. Uh, one page in link, in length, do not shrink it to the microscopic level. I know you could set it to print, maximize on one page. Please, please, please don't make it so it's, you need a magnifying glass. Try to use bullets and phrases instead of paragraphs. If you guys just see many, many multiple paragraphs and lines to read, it's, you know, it's too much. Just looking at the book, if you guys look at your textbooks, you're more likely to read sections that have bullets. They're easier to read than just phrases. Uh, good spacing, don't cram everything, and make sure you balance left and right. I don't want to have really large margins on the left and then really small ones on the right. In general, it's one inch all the way around. However, if you really are hurting for space, you can go 0.9 inches all the way around. Avoid spelling and grammar errors. Run a spell checker at least twice. And I would highly suggest you go line by line and just read it out loud. <clears throat> Try to stick to the same tense. If you're using previous jobs or education, always write in the past tense. Current jobs or education, always written in the present tense. So you're currently a physical therapy assistant student. However, once you start handing these out, you'll be graduated. So for those on 170, you technically have to write current when you hand out the resume on the second day of 170 when you do the job fair. But technically after the job fair, if you start handing things out in between then and the graduation date, you're current. But after that, you're now a past student. It just It's kind of funny when you start talking about, oh, I used to work at job A, uh, and this is what I did. I do. Well, you need to say this is what you did, not what you do. So just kind of don't get caught up with the tense. And the reason why I'm really strict about that is you don't want someone to read your resume and then see, oh, this is kind of doesn't make sense. And if they don't understand, they're less likely to read your resume. They'll just look at the next one. So you want to have a good flow. Um, it's kind of like the papers you guys have to write for other classes. You want to have a really good flow because if the instructor or someone whoever's reading it stops, the more likely to see if there's an error there. Do you want to be able to just read it from beginning to end and not have any trouble? Um, then again, avoid first person, I, me, or my. Types and suggestions. If you're submitting electronically, use a PDF. A PDF is going to do a really great job. It's going to save the formatting. We've already had a talk over the last couple semesters. When you open a Word file in a Mac or Mac on a Word, sometimes it kind of jumbles up the letters. However, if you save it, to a PDF, usually you hit File, Save As, PDF, or sometimes you could hit File, Print, and it'll save it to PDF. If you submit it digitally that way, you're gonna have a really good format. It's gonna keep the format the same, plus you won't have those little red squigglies. Right? So if you, clearly on your own Word file, you guys have added your last name so it doesn't come up as flagged. There are certain phrases that you just have to mark, but when you email it to an instructor or another um, individual, it's going to come up on their squeakies because they may not have your last name added. So saving as PDF just kind of keeps that formatting and keeps that spelling good. So please make sure your resume is appropriate. You guys have kind of noticed that on my assignments as well. So here, a good one is Sousa underscore J resume PDF. Good, clear. The person who receives it is going to understand. Um, bad, uh, sexy dope Uber resume that's on fleek. That's going to throw up some red flags. I know you guys might be laughing right now, but you know, make it appropriate. You don't want to say my resume because when they get it, they're not going to know who it is. They're not going to want to open the resume to figure out who it is. Okay. Just that level of organization is going to let them know, oh, this person took it seriously. They spent three extra seconds to name the file name what it should have been. I want to look at them if they're going to spend three extra seconds. Layout uh, consistency. I already talked about reverse chronological or chronological. Um, I prefer a little bit more reverse chronological. But what I'm really checking for, especially in 140, is that you make it consistent okay. across all the sections. Um, easier to read. Never go smaller than 10 point font. I'm going to go and let you know that in general, people who read your resumes are older, so they have trouble with vision. You really need to stick to 11, ideally 12 point font, and pick fonts that are really easy to read. The only exception is you can use a, a very classic or a different kind of font for your name. But everything else will be very easy to find, easy to read headers. Um, you want to have consistent verbiage and formatting. Make it very consistent. 
and very predictable. You don't want to have one header and then the second or third header looks totally different than the first. That doesn't make it unique. That makes it stand out and looks poorly. It almost looks like you weren't able to figure out how to fix the headers, so you left it the way it was. Um, reminders. Uh, interviewers are going to look at your resume in 10 or 20 seconds. They're looking for a no. Looking for a really good way to just to get rid of it. So if your education is chronological, your experience is reverse chronological, vice versa. If they don't match, they might get rid of it. If your font name says something kind of odd, they're going to get rid of it. If your something spelled wrong, they're going to get rid of it. If they realize that the tense or grammar are incorrect, they might get rid of it. And they're just looking at what's a no stack, what's a maybe stack, and these are definitely people I want to interview. The goal of making a clean resume is never to get on that no stack, period. You want to definitely get on that interview or that maybe list, but I want you guys not to be eliminated right away. Um, highlight your skills, achievements, and what you've learned. Do not create a duty list. Okay, don't start saying like you mop floors, you clean the skillet, you did all this. Highlight those skills. You know, like were you very independent with cleaning procedures? Uh, I see a lot of resumes, and I've had jobs like that too, where you know you mop floors, mop counters, clean tables. Well, you did closing cleaning duties, or you did opening cleaning duties. Um, and then if they want to get more, what did you do? They'll ask you. But realistically, now that you're graduating PTA, they're really less concerned of what you did. Um, they're not going to have you mop the floors and have something else to do. You get paid way too much to mop floors. They're going to give you patience for you to gate train. Only use one font that's the same size. Different sizes are expected for the headers. Your name can also be in a different size and a different font. Margins, one inch or half an inch. Again, I do allow a little liberty with that. Sometimes I go 0.9 or you know, 90% of an inch but you do want to make it uniform. So professionalism, professional emails, uh, joeso at cosedu or joesus at gmail.com, those are great. Really bad, bigbootylicious at hotmail.com, that's really not gonna, not gonna stick out very well. I mean, they're gonna uh, disagree with you right away. Something else to kind of consider, I don't, I'm not really sure how your emails at school work, so if once you graduate, that email gets deactivated, I'd really consider putting them to your personal one. And it's gotta be a personal one that you actually check. It wouldn't be surprised if once you start working at your job, you get a, some random email from a, a person wanting to touch base with you. It's still important to answer the call. Even if you have a job and you get a call for another interview, you just plug with the clients and you're really happy with your current job. Because you never burn bridges. You never burn bridges, you don't know how they're connected. Um, make sure your voicemail greeting is appropriate to the point. Never have a voicemail that reveals too much about you or too much information. Um, do not disclose during an interview or in your voicemail, marriage status, gender orientation. Those are private information, they don't have to know it. So looking at the resume for objective statements, these are optional, but they should indicate an, an excellent statement that will answer the following. What type of position are you seeking? Internship level or entry level? What type of company, industry, job are you seeking? So you're looking at human resources, operational management, sales. So are you looking at outpatient physical therapy, inpatient, uh, rehab, is there a certain focus you wanna work on, orthopedic sports or neuro? And what qualities do you bring to the job, your strengths? Next biggest one I'm gonna have is, don't write physical therapy assistant, everyone writes out in their resume. It's really physical therapist assistant. So make sure you guys have those distinctions. Okay. So just wrapping up, make sure you tailor the position which you're applying, that can be tricky. You need to make sure you get online to their website, read their mission statement, read any goals they have to do, um, tailor it around that. Print on quality neutral colored paper. It's always gonna be updated and current. I personally like to save my file names before I submit them to the date that I've changed it. So I'll have uh, J. Souza, 4-22-2018. And then of course, before I email it to them, I'll rename it. But this way, I just have multiple resumes. And if I wanna update it, I just copy and paste the same resume. So I have about 30, 40 resumes on a computer because it, I like having the different dates. So if I need to go back to an old one and see what I said, I have it. And hard drive space is so big, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense just to have one resume if you wanna go back to the old one. Uh, make sure it's been proofread by at least three different people. Proofreading should be done on paper, not on a computer. It's easier to miss errors on a computer screen than it is on paper. It's much easier to grade, and that's how the other person's gonna look at you, is through paper. Finally, before we kinda end this online quick tutorial, social media, all of it should be appropriate. 
All of it should be appropriate and relevant comment, uh, content. Would your parents or grandparents be embarrassed of what they say? It will cost at least one person their job eventually. So I'd go to Facebook, I'd go to Instagram, start untagging yourself if there's any inappropriate ones, start removing the content now. One of the first things they do now is they start searching it. So if you have time today, that's what I would be doing if I were you. I appreciate everyone's time. I know you guys are very busy. Um, thank you for those of you who are 140, taking the time to get look through this to update your resume. And thanks again for those in 170 decided to look through it again. Thank you.